Cinema. Welcome back to Werewolf Cinema. I'm your host, Greg, the local metalhead, and with me is... Par the Collector. What's up, everybody? And you gave me Out Cold. I gave you Out Cold, man. You are really good about finding these cult comedies that yeah. nobody else has heard of except the people that fucking love it. Yeah. And I realized some of these movies that you give me have some hardcore fan bases, and Out Cold is definitely one of them. I hope this movie does numbers like the fucking Giver dog. Oh, nobody, nobody's right. reviewed this on YouTube. We're yes. going to be the ones yes. to review it. You're that welcome. I, that I've seen, so. You're welcome, America. <laughs> so if you're looking for an Out Cold review, here you go. Um, please don't get mad at me. No, that's fine. Man. Not you. I, I'm talking about the fan base uh, because there is a hardcore fan base behind oh, really? this, and I don't have a whole uh, lot of good things to say about it, but I know they're going to come after feel me. feel free to tear them up in the comments because <laughs> this is a good movie. This is a good movie. I had to give you a good movie to bounce back from the shit movie you gave me last week. <laughs> yeah, I get you it. You almost ruined Scarlett Johansson for me. <laughs> you almost did. Like, I had to watch the fucking Avengers twice just to get myself in a better mood. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, it was, I, I don't know, man. You know what's funny is, uh, shout out to Victor, because I messaged him. I was like, hey, if you haven't seen Under the Skin, just check. He's like, I fucking love that movie. I was like, well, Nick didn't, didn't, Bro, Nick didn't care for it I'm too much. I'm so glad Victor, are they still doing that? Uh, I, I, think, I, I think they called it quits. But Victor's like, he's working on mo- a movie career, so is good on him. Good for yeah. him, dude. Yeah, he actually did a movie that got released. I, I can't, I'm sorry, I cannot remember the name of it. But yeah, you know what, man? We need to have him on. Definitely, yeah. I'd love to have Victor on again because me and him have the same taste in like art house movies. So it would be cool for him to like pick one of those movies. Yeah, shout out to Victor, man. Hope but he liked it a lot. Man. He liked Under the Skin. I bet he fucking did, dude. <laughs> <laughs> there was a couple movies that we would talk when I was talking to him before mm-hmm. we did the episode or after. And I'd be like, "Yeah, we just watched this. It was fucking brutal." And he'd be like, "I really enjoyed it." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you and fucking Greg should do this shit. <laughs> we really should. It would just, like I said. It would just be a circle jerk. It would. Just me and Victor movie. just jerking each other off how much we love our house movies. But And that's why I like this dynamic is right. because we don't agree. And that I think that's unique. Well, I, I feel like when it matters, mm-hmm. like for a movie that matters for history, like we, we agree on it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's not I love Goodfellas and you're like, it's okay. You know, like. <laughs> It's an okay movie. Uh, Stalker is a classic, and you don't like that one. Yeah, but I don't even feel like you like Stalker. Like I that. like Stalker. I liked it a lot. You like it, but like you don't like it like that. Like you're not gonna <laughs> pop that bitch. In no, no, no. Today. It's not gonna be in my like top twenty five. Which, by the way, I was gonna do a top twenty five as my pick, mm. but after watching Out Cold, I was like, Nah, I got, I got him. I got, I had to pick out a movie. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm interested in what you think. So tell me what it's about, man. Out Cold is about a. Um, this guy owns a mountain where people snowboard, ski, and everything like An that. Drunk in, dude in Alaska. I know. I love. I actually really do like the statue. This was his last movie before he died. Was it? Yeah. Damn. And uh, he gives his Old land. Mountain. He gives his mountain to his. What is it? Son, grandson. It's a ski resort. Yeah, it's a ski resort. Yeah, and it's the nephew. I nephew believe. inherited it. Yeah, the bartender. Oh, it was the bartender? No, no, no. You're right. No, it it's wasn't. the bald dude. Yeah, it's the yeah. little Weasley dude. Right. So um so they want to try to bring more people tourism because more tourism, there you go. Because they do skiing, there's a ski lift, and that's like the big attraction. They got a couple bar they got a big bar that their friend works at. Right. And so th- it's like a little ski town. Right. Like people so, go there on college. So they want to make sure this doesn't go under. So they hi- they uh, they want to like sell it to somebody that will bring that tourism so they don't lose their mountain because they can't afford it anymore. And so this guy comes in to buy the mountain. He's Lee Majors. It. Lee Majors comes in and uh, he scouts the place out to see what he thinks. He's changing this, changing that. And then they decided they don't want to sell it. They want the old ways back so now they have to like because the original dude that stole the mountain from the indians because that's what they keep that's like a running joke in the yeah, movie. yeah, yeah. they're like well we, we this is our mountain we earned it fair and square well i mean we stole it from the indians but who cares <laughs> like, like, like it's like a running joke they Cause, say like because it's in alaska right right yeah. yeah yeah and uh and so they fumble the whole plan they end up not selling it to the guy and that's pretty much like the plot point so um so it's a raunchy com a raunchy comedy about but it's, snowboarding and it's PG thirteen Nick. This is my biggest gripe about this fucking movie. Why is this PG thirteen? <sighs> I still think it delivers a quite a few hilarious fucking moments in it for being PG thirteen. Okay, so I got my notes. Um, 
You want to know my most disappointing fact about this movie? What's that? Is the fact that the guy, the main one, Jason London, I thought it was the dude. Because when I swear to God, I'm, people are going to think I'm stupid. But like growing up, I did not know that Jason and Jeremy London were twins. I thought it was the same fucking guy. Holy fuck. You just blew my mind. You, you didn't know either? No. You just blew my fucking mind. Because I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, what else has this guy been in? Right. And so I'm looking him up and like... And you know that my one of my favorite movies of all time is Mallrats. So the whole time I watch this movie, I'm thinking I'm watching T- TS from fucking yes. Mallrats. Yes. And I'm like, damn, man, he's gotten better, dude. Like, why isn't this guy in shit anymore? And then I looked up other movies that Jason, uh, you know, whatever's been in. And I'm like, okay. Why is not cold? Why isn't why isn't mall rats on this motherfucker? Oh yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean. And like, then I look into it, and of course, mall rats has the brother that's fucking crazy that was on Melrose Place or whatever, Party of Five or whatever the fuck he was on, and he said he got kidnapped by somebody when really people just think he made it up to to like keep himself famous. Yeah, it's sad as shit. You just literally like blew my skull out of the back of my brain. So it with turns that. out that the actor that's been in the better movies is the brother that I don't fucking care about. The one from All Rats is the fucking disappointment. <laughs> so it damn near ruined that fucking movie for me. Jer- Jeremy and Jason London is their brothers. That is fucking funny. They're I did, not, twins. did yes. not know that. Holy shit. Thank you for clearing that up with me because I was driving myself crazy watching this movie. I'm like, I know I've seen this guy. I thank you for telling me mall rats. Cause that's what it was. Yeah. I'm like, I know I recognize him from something. Oh, that's not him. It's his brother. Fuck me, man. That's crazy. That's a fun fact yeah. right there. Well, I'm glad I, I'm glad I did that. I, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I ain't had a real good fun fact in a while. <laughs> it was a good one. Yeah. It turns out it's not even true. <laughs> Not even true. <laughs> Not even true. It's just the same guy. Um, I already said PG-13 question mark, but the reason I said that is because how are you not going to show any tits? Like, there's a lot of raunchiness in this movie, and the one part I got to where um, they're in the, the lift, there's a bunch she of girls. Him. No, no, no. That one I kind of understand. She's part of the group, so she doesn't want to show her tits. So that one, I'm talking about when they were in the lift with all the, the, oh, yeah. the models. Bro, but you can't tell me. Fucking Pigpen and Zach Galifianakis are the best fucking parts of this movie. I said. And the, and the bartender. Like, those three made this fucking movie for me, dude. I can't fucking say his name, but David Koshner? Koshner. The guy that was wearing shorts the whole time. Mustache. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He's funny. I forgot he's in this. He's yeah. funny as shit in this movie. I said, David. Koshner, Koshner, I'm sorry, I can't say his name. And Zach Galifianakis are the only funny parts. It's fucking uh, Champ from right. fucking Anchorman. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is like one of his first movies. Yeah. Like, he wasn't a big timer when this thing came out. Oh, definitely not. And he has so many like running jokes in this movie that are fucking hilarious. Like he's always wearing shorts. He stabs himself with that fucking knife. <laughs> right. You all right? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm, I'm good. Fine. I'm good. He goes off on these weird tangents. Like I, he was by far my favorite part of this movie be careful what you wish for <laughs> but just the shorts had me dying every time i seen him he was in shorts in the middle of the fucking right because everybody else is like wearing bundled fucking, up yeah. and everything he's walking around in fucking shorts uh zach galifianakis man i feel bad like you know he did a good job in this movie he did but he this came out in 2001 so it was way before his time so i right, think right. he was trying to make a name for himself and not yeah. doing his comedy well if you notice he's he's in like probably five or six movies where he just plays somebody's best friend or whatever like he's yeah. a bubble boy bro right and that's like one of the first movies i remember that he got it kind of showed a little bit of himself yeah like being fucking weird and shit and then he was in uh happens in vegas with Ashton Kutcher, and he, mm-hmm. he had to show a little bit more. But then when he did the hangovers, that's what. Blows. Definitely. When Zach Galifianakis can like do his line of comedy, he's hilarious. And you see little glimpses of this because I know him getting his dick stuck in the, the fucking that hot tub machine call. was his call. Yeah. Him getting um, the polar bear eating his cock. Like that's, that's his, like he has a lot of funny things that I'm like, Zach Bell definitely is the re- the one that told him he wanted to do this. <laughs> that shit's hilarious when he walks up and he's got the pile of snow on his dick and he's like, yo, are you good? He's like, had a rough night with a polar bear. <laughs> <laughs> Can you get herpes from polar bears? 
<laughs> bro, the way they fuck with him when he passes out drunk is the fucking best, bro. Like, watching this movie makes me sad that I don't have friends that I'm this cool with. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, when they put they drag Zach Galifianakis, that's their, like, the, the group's thing. Mm -hmm. He get shitty drunk and then pass out, and they're like, what are we doing tonight, boys? Shaving off his eyebrows, you know, gluing his hand to his dick, you know, stuff like that. They're like, nah, I got a better idea. His brother is the ringleader of fucking with him, which is the greatest part. Made me wish I had a brother. If you and your brother don't do shit like this to each other, y'all are, are fucking up, man. <laughs> they put him out in his car. And because they're in fucking Alaska, like everything's frozen over. So like the car kind of spins, like if you get enough people. So they get this fucking car spinning real good and they all get in the car with him. <laughs> they just fucking wake him up like he's driving. <laughs> <laughs> ah! He's like, I got it. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the greatest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> I laugh for twenty minutes. Like I still, like, I've seen this movie twenty fucking times. I still laugh about that. Right? Shit. There are some like parts that are funny to me. Um, I'm glad I wrote it down because I completely forgot about this. The lesbian chat room. Oh yeah. Oh my god, dude! Like everybody when they were ten. The, the reason it's so funny is because of how true it is. So these two guys get in a lesbian chat room and then start chatting with each other. Mm. Fucking. Oh yeah. Shit, dude. Fucking Reno nine one ones in this too. I yeah, forget yeah, his yeah. name. Todd or something. Yeah. But he was, he wasn't he, really like big at the time. No, he wasn't. And this was one of his come ups and he was okay. I've seen him in better things. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, Reno nine one one. Right. But, uh, I like him in the third era and Kumar too. No. Oh, yeah. I need to rewatch that. I've been dying to watch I have it on Blu-ray. Oh, me too. <laughs> I don't know why. As soon as I saw I it, I'm like, I got to get Because I went to the theater and seen it, and I was dying laughing. Me too. It's so funny. I love Neil Patrick Harris and that shit, dude. I really do. He's the best. He's like, the best part of that movie, he's yeah. He's one of the best parts, yeah, yeah. for sure. Like Because I didn't care for the second one, but the third one brought it back around, and I'm like, oh, thank you. See, the second one, it uh, they almost lost me at that one, but what saved it for me was them hanging out with Bush at the end. Yeah. Like, that was fucking funny. <laughs> He's like, man, this weed's crazy. He's like, yeah, it's laced with coke, man. Kind of puts you out and brings you back at the same time. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> that's how I see George Bush, like an old party dude. Oh, 100%. Like, we got to get the hell out. I thought y'all were chaining. That guy scares the shit out of me. <laughs> but yeah, there were certain parts of the second one that were funny. But, uh, you know, I definitely would have enjoyed it more had they had been in Amsterdam and shit would have went wrong. Yeah. Because that's where the, I thought it was going. You know what I mean? But them going to Guantanamo Bay and all that shit, I was like, oh, that's kind of stupid. Yeah, it was kind of dumb. I didn't like it either. Um, the only other note that I have is uh, the soundtrack's pretty good on this. I'll give it that. Like, It has a pretty I mean, good soundtrack. Like 90s soundtrack. Yeah, but there's one. They played Andrew WK. Yeah, I've heard that guy in forever. Right. And they didn't even play like Party Hard. They played one of his other songs, which I was like, fucking Andrew WK. Hell yeah, I'm, I'm down. I'm Let's in for get it. Drunk. Let's I have to say, done. though, like there was one running joke that I'm not a fan of. I can't remember the song, but they played the same song like 10 times. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, stop it. <laughs> God damn it. That's never it's only funny for the person doing it. It's not fun for the rest of us. Dude, I love when when they meet her fiance. and They're like, bro, we're going to kick his fucking ass, bro. We're going to send him back. back. And he's a fucking wheelchair. Is that Galvanax? is like, yeah, I'm having second thoughts about beating the shit out of this guy. <laughs> Do you know who he is? <clears throat> I forget. He's a professional snowboarder. Is he? Yeah. It, and oh. he's the only one in the movie that can't ride a snowboard because he's crippled. <laughs> because they couldn't afford to watch him snowboard in the movie. Is that what it was? Probably. I know. It's just, that's a funny joke. Is to have the one actual like professional snowboarder in a wheelchair crippled. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure Jason London wasn't out there fucking snowboarding, oh, fuck like, you know, or Zach Galifianakis. None of them were. None no. of the motherfuckers. That's like. a good thing. Oh, oh, thank you for reminding me. Budget. This blew my mind. Oh, dude, got to be like 100K. No. It can't be much. <laughs> Lee Majors probably cost the most out of this movie. Nah. I was, oh, I was, you're talking about 100,000? Yeah. Like, mm. Mm, 24 no, million dollars well dude if you think about it like there were people that not weren't big yet but they were on the come up that's what i'm saying 2001 a lot of these people weren't big yet yeah but you add it up <laughs> i guess and jason london he had been in a bunch of stuff by then yeah like, i just that blew it 24 million just seems like a lot for this raunchy 
comedy. Like I was thinking like under 10. Well, I would guarantee, I would almost fucking guarantee this movie didn't make its money back. Oh, 100%. I don't think it did. But it's definitely got a cult following. Like, I saw it in theaters. Did you really? I was cleaning one. Oh, fuck. Of course you were. <laughs> mugs and movies. I was living. No, it wasn't Mugs. That was the north side. Oh, I see. Yeah. That was when I was. So you worked at Mugs and Movies for how long? Uh, almost all high school. But you also cleaned theaters with your dad. Just one. I used to clean the north side movie theater. So, okay. For some reason, I was thinking it was like the same thing. But you had like two separate jobs, but they were both in movie theaters. Yeah. That's fucking funny. One when I was actually able to get paychecks and one when it was like pretty much just child labor laws. So you just like clean theaters until you were old enough to actually like get a real job and then worked in another theater. (laughs) Pretty much. I guess that makes sense. Yeah. That's why, like I said, like people were like, oh, do you like movies? I'm like, bro, you don't even understand. Yeah. I've been watching movies my whole life. Literally. Like, I'd be sweeping a theater watching a movie because, like, nobody would show up. And mm-hmm. I'd be like, fuck it, I'm going to go clean that bitch while it's still going, you know? That's smart. So I'd just turn a, a flashlight on and put that bitch in my neck, and I'd be sweeping up popcorn watching, like, you ever, like 20 minutes or something. Do you ever, like, sit down and chill when you were supposed to be cleaning it just to watch the movie? If it was something I really wanted to see or if it was something, like, I knew my dad wasn't going to come in. Yeah. Like, when How High was in theaters, right. I knew my dad was never coming down there. So, like, every night I would just kick up and watch the last, like, 30 minutes of How High. Hell yeah. I was like 10. <laughs> I shouldn't have been watching that shit at all. Like. And I know in mugs and movies, like people order their food like a, like before it starts. They don't order too much as it's going. So I'm sure you didn't have anything to do while the movie was playing. So I'm sure you kicked like back first, and watched it. The first 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we would start taking orders, you know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes before, before the movie. Yeah. That way, when the credits would start, people would be eating their food. Yes. And we wouldn't try... We would all. Uh, it was always the goal was to have all the orders out before the movie started, right? Because you don't want people to be getting food while they're trying to watch a fucking movie. Yeah, these people walking around and shit. Yeah, right. Because there were tables everywhere. Yeah, because I remember my dad took us to it, and I liked it a lot. Yeah, bro. I, I have a very fortunate childhood of getting to see a lot of fucking cinema for free. Like, <laughs> right. People talk about pirating movies. Like, I stole so much movie from movies, like, yeah. just watching them for free. I think it's years. just part of the benefit. Like, we'll pay you and you get to watch all these movies. So. Oh, I mean, when I worked at Mugs, I was making like $8 an hour. Yeah. So they go with me. <laughs> <laughs> and I was working for nothing for my dad. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, But yeah, there I was watching. There's this one uh, uh, reporter on E mm. that that's this is her favorite movie. And anytime she talks to Zach Galifianakis, she brings up this movie and he loses his shit. He's like fucking deep cut. <laughs> He's probably like, why the fuck do you still talk about this? Yeah, thing? yeah, yeah. He does. Like, I've paid money to not have people bring this shit up. Because <laughs> she'll ask him, like, when is Out Cold 2 coming out? And he just dies <laughs> laughing. <laughs> Would you see it, though? I would. I mean, if Zach's in it, yeah. If you brought back the exact same cast. I mean, I know now you think that budget $24 billion was a lot, dude. Oh, Shit. it's going to balloon. Is Lee Majors even alive anymore? I don't know. He can't be. But also the bartender, he does a lot of stuff now. He's yeah. big. Dude, and uh, so is fucking uh, David, like you said, David Kocher. Yeah. He's big as shit. Oh, yeah. You're not getting him back without a without playing. Even a pretty- dude from Reno. Like yep. they've even brought Reno nine one one back. Like he's he's not he's getting making money now. Mm-hmm. And the uh, the girl I don't remember her name. The one he had a crush on or was yeah. Because that's another sub part of this movie is he's in love with this girl that's kind of married. Like, it's like a yeah. That's what I like about this movie is like it was <clears throat> at certain parts it was trying to be a rom com, but yes. like it didn't give enough shit about the love interest. Yeah. To like keep it going, because like we all knew that he was going to end up with the best friend. At the end of it, yeah. the one that was like trying to fuck him the whole time, mm-hmm. like everybody, everybody knew that you know. Yeah, they, they, well, that's the thing is you've seen that so many times since then. So, but I love the brother, man. The best line of the entire fucking movie because they're because like when they start changing shit on the mountain, when Lee Majors tries to buy the mountain, he changes the name. He goes from Bull Mountain to Snow Nook, mm-hmm. and uh, he starts making him wear all these stupid ass. Uh, like uniforms and everything. And Zach Galifianakis has like a running bit. Did you watch the, uh, the bloopers at the end? Cause yeah, Zach I did actually. Cause kills yeah. It and that shit too. That's why I kept watching it. Cause it had all Zach's bloopers in it. And I was like, this is fucking hilarious. He saying like these fucking gold lines. Like yeah. how did you, he's like, these pants are really cramping my hardy boys. There's no <laughs> mystery. 
<laughs> I was like, that should have been in the movie, dude. That's hilarious. He said some others that they bleeped out because yeah. it was too, because it's PG-13. Yeah, which he's is, rated an R. Yeah. Dude. Yeah, that's what I feel like if you did get Zalika Afanakis in any capacity, he's going to give you a, a good 20, 30 minutes of yeah. fucking jokes. Like, 100%. Yeah, bro, yeah. Pick whatever you want, dog. He's hilarious. I love him. That's why I didn't mind watching it. And he's in it just enough to keep my interest. But They have a good call making him the best friend instead of Pigpen. 100%, yeah. Even though Pigpen is great, too. And uh, even the even the black dude, he's pretty funny. Yeah. Like, he's got a couple parts. Yeah. Uh, he has this one where he's like counting down. They're supposed to like go wreck the thing and they're on their snowboards at the top of the mountain. He's like, all right, on three, one, two. And then he counts to fucking a, like a thousand. Yeah. Or something. And, before he wipes goes. Out and then wipes out immediately after. Yeah. That was pretty funny. Everybody but, knows you're going to wipe out, man. <laughs> I know like when you see a rom-com, like it's not really kosher to like pick apart the, t- the, the script, I guess yeah. you could say, cause it's, that's not the point. It's for the jokes, but there wasn't a lot of, jokes that made me laugh there were some here and there and i talked about most of them right and i just didn't like the story i just didn't care that's what my that was my biggest thing is like i did not care about this snowboard resort and i didn't care about the love interest no i didn't care about the love interest but i think the snow shit was funny enough like like i said there was enough bits in it yeah that kept me laughing through it yeah because the more i talk about this the more it sounds like i really like this movie but i probably never watch it again because it just wasn't enough for me I just think it's like a, it's just a stupid, funny movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I don't, you know, I watch it once every, this, watching it for this was like the first time I had seen it in like probably two years. Really? You still liked it just as much? I guess it I has mean, that nostalgia. I mean, it wasn't like, I was like, oh man, I'm glad, you know, but like, like I said, I just have fun with it. Right. Like, you know, it's not a long movie. You know, it's like, it's like a quick hour and a half. Like they're stupid jokes. And I, I like I said, this is probably one of my lower branch this is a comedy movies. That That's I like. what I was saying. Like you have a very, cause I like most all comedy, but you have this like niche. That's like my brand of comedy that I don't care for. And you like really sink right into that. Dude, the best fucking joke of this entire movie, mm-hmm. like I said, because they're trying to get them all fired and they're changing everything on the mountain and they all work at the ski resort, you know, together. Mm-hmm. The, t- the brothers at Galfinagas, uh, Pigpit. I don't know what the dude's real name is. He's not in shit anymore. No, no. I don't think. But. He, don't, he doesn't really have a career. And uh, Jason and all of them, like, they all work there. And uh, <laughs> the dude for Rito 911 comes in. He goes, You smell that? I love that smell. That's the smell of your asses getting fired. Drug tests. And the fucking brother goes, Bro. I don't need to take a test to tell you I do drugs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I fucking love that, dude. <laughs> Big Pin, you go to the bathroom in the cup, and then he even finishes the joke. It's even better, dude. He shits in the fucking cup and puts it back on the table. <laughs> fucking legendary, man. Like, the yeah. greatest, one of the greatest scenes in any movie. I don't give a fuck. I'll, I'll die on that bridge, or I'll die on that fucking No, no, no. When he said that, like, I don't, I don't need to piss in a I cup. I don't need to take a test to tell you I do drugs. <laughs> that shit was actually pretty funny. <laughs> and he said it, like, so casually. Like, it was hilarious. Um, I thought you were going to say, this is, <laughs> it's based off Casablanca. Yeah. I guess it ha- no, it it is. They purposely did that. They have scenes that are taken specifically from Casablanca, and if you put them side by side, they're the same fucking scene. That's fucking hilarious. Yeah, well, I don't I've know. seen Casablanca, but it's been like forever. Right. If you go back and watch it, and then watch this after that, be like, they fucking did Casablanca. Like that's just, even funnier. It, it's hilarious. It's a really funny, like deep cut. If you didn't so know, so you did like this movie? No, I. <laughs> <laughs> fucking liked it bro <laughs> it's it's funny but it's okay buddy. it's not enough to that's like why we're doing this <laughs> it's okay to like one man it's not i like it when i like one yeah you know what i mean yeah, no, like, no, it's no. an added bonus well I mean? uh idle hands i loved idle hands that was a very like and i gave you that bomb. one thinking it would piss you off right like, you know what i mean i actually like that one i don't know there just wasn't enough for here for me to sink my teeth and do like, there's a couple of things here and there, but... Like I said, if you just want, like, a quick, lighthearted comedy, that's why I gave yeah, it Yeah, if it was on, I'm not going to turn it off. Because I, I was depressed after I watched the last movie you gave me, so I felt like maybe you needed to pick me up, too. Like, oh. you were crying for help. That's fine, because I think we're just... I think we're going to be teeing off for a while, because you gave me a buddy, a buddy film, like, a mm. bunch of friends hanging out, having a good time. 
So I was like, I have the perfect movie for him. This movie makes you feel like shit because you don't have friends that are that cool, dude. So I picked this. It's a, it's a group of friends mm-hmm. that get together. I think it's once a year or something like that. Well, I see two people, three people on the cover that I'm already excited about. Oh, yeah. I fucking <clears throat> love Jeremy Piven. Like, I love that. Ari, man. The movie is... And Thomas Jane, bro. The original Punisher. Yeah. Well, no. That's Dolph Lundgren. Dolph Lundgren, yeah. My bad. Second Punisher. <laughs> I melt with you. Some would say the worst Punisher. Depends. Did you like the Punisher more than Warzone? No, no, not more no, than saying, Warzone. Warzone was awesome, bro. And Ray Stevenson looks like Frank Castle, bro. Yeah, right. He and does. Don't get me wrong. I love John Barenthal mm-hmm. as the Punisher. He's great Punisher. He's the best Punisher. Yeah, acting, action, all that shit by far. Storylines, way he's written, all that. I yeah, love it. And you can have this pack. But Ray Stevenson looks the part. Looks like the yeah, comic he does. Book Frank Castle because I've read. I've actually read Punisher, and when I seen Wars, I'm like, the fucker looks exactly like him. I think if they grew Barenthal's hair out a little more and like combed it, slicked it back, I think he could look a little bit more like the comic book version. Yeah, maybe. But he just rocks the same haircut and everything. He does, doesn't he? He really does. But like, <laughs> he's like, no, I'm not so cutting my hair. Good. Like, yeah, right. Oh, I'm gonna sell this shit, man. Dude, his war cry as the Punisher is something that I've never heard in anything else. Like, but like when he's doing that fucking gauntlet mm-hmm. in Daredevil, dude. And he just sees like all 30 of the motherfuckers like he ain't backing down. Oh, oh, and he just fucking starts sticking shivs motherfuckers necks. It is some fucking beautiful filmmaking. Yes. Or just cinema in general. I know it's a show, whatever, but right. But that part still beautiful filmmaking. Yes. A hundred percent. Like, I feel like you living through it with him. <laughs> he's covered in fucking other people's blood and he's get fucking stabs. He gets stabbed a couple times, you know, and he's just laying there like he just the real deal fought for his fucking life. Yeah. Like you were hanging there with him. Like, God damn, is he going to live? Right. Like, it's it's awesome. It is a great scene. I love that scene. And I want to go back and rewatch the whole Punisher and Daredevil. I'm not going to lie. That se- se- uh, season two of Daredevil with him and the Punisher is probably like the best season of any superhero show I've ever seen. I think so, too. Yeah, it's fucking amazing. I agree with you. Like, that's tough to top. Mm-hmm. Like, it starts off episode one. He mercs an entire Irish mafia family right. while they're having a drink, <laughs> arguing. They're about to kill each other anyways. And he still blows them all away. Like, mm. I was like, yes, this is going to be good. This is going to be good. <laughs> um, Back to the original Punisher. I wish they just wouldn't have called it Punisher, and I would have liked that movie. Go at the one with uh, Travolta as the bad guy? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the thing is like, I like the movie, but uh, I don't like it as a Punisher movie. It's weird. Other than the hitmen they sent after him. Mm-hmm. Like, it's almost like they didn't use anything from the comics. Right. Like, fucking... Like like you said, if, the, if they didn't call it the Punisher, you almost wouldn't know this was a fucking like movie. Exactly, because he doesn't even start wearing the fucking skull and shit until like the last scene. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know, and they, Kevin Nash. Like I feel like if you to lean more on the comic book more lore in that one, it could have been better. Right, it would have been better. You make John Travolta an actual comic book like mafia guy, like you know, and I don't know, like that movie is just disappointing. That's what I always but. say, like. As a Punisher movie, yeah, it's disappointing. As like an action comedy, it's pretty fucking or <laughs> action movie. It's pretty fucking good. It is comical in some places. Though. It does have its moments. I don't know. I enjoy it. I but- love where he sticks the fucking popsicle on the dude's back. <laughs> He's convincing him that it's so hot that it's cold. Because that makes sense. Like you know, the shock your body would go into. Right. Probably would feel like that for about half a second. But anyways, back to Al Cold. Right. Uh, yeah. Like I said, there's just. Great little jokes, little Mm one-liners. And uh, like I said, it's just a fun movie. I didn't want you to take it serious or anything. No, I didn't take it serious. There just just wasn't enough joke for me. Yeah, I went back into the last time. Like I said, I I still chuckled at all the shit I was just talking about. The polar bear and the car. Yeah, it has its like moments. Like the car part will forever fucking slay me. And then the drug drug test line. Like I love that fucking line. That shit was funny. Uh, But yeah, like. I give it a, you give it a seven. Oh, and when old boy punches him in the fucking wheelchair, <laughs> when he's like, thinks he's faking it, he yeah. fucking hits him in the leg. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Just check him. <laughs> what the fuck? <sighs> I'm 
don't you stick that knife in your leg, Ricky Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I want a sequel to, man. 100%. Dude. That would, I mean. They could save NASCAR with that shit, bro. Oh, yeah. Make Jimmy Johnson the bad guy. I mean, it doesn't even have to be about NASCAR. I just love their dynamic. But after uh, Sherlock. Yeah. Holmes and Sherlock, I heard like. Who the fuck told them that they should rock British accents for that? Movie? Yeah, right. That's a terrible idea. Like, I love their duo, but just, <laughs> I don't know. That wasn't the one. It's like they got, they were starting to start to drink the Kool-Aid a little too much. Bro, we're so good together. We could do anything, bro. We could be fucking Watts, Holmes and Watson, bro, and we'd be straight. Yeah, that, oh, I yeah, think bro. they get too much, too much freedom. Exactly. Y'all should rein this shit in a little bit. A little bit. You need yeah. to call Adam McKay and tell him to write y'all another hit. Yeah. Because he did Talladega Nights and he did Step Brothers. Man. Step Brothers is amazing. It's probably the best dumb buddy co- uh, dumb buddy comedy ever, dude. A hundred percent. Yeah. Like that's every me, scene right? makes me laugh. That shit that is the movie Will that Ferrell got the money forever. That's the movie that got me back into Will Ferrell because I'm like, he's just a dumb man child. Then I seen Step Brothers, could not stop laughing. Went back, watched Tell Day and Nights, watched Anchorman, like Elf. Actually, I ain't gonna lie, Anchorman was that movie for me. Oh, yeah. I love Anchorman. I didn't see it. That's the thing. Like, I haven't watched it. Yeah, I seen like clips and stuff like that, but I'm like, he's just a man child. He's not for me, kind of thing. Because I watched Elf and I thought that was dumb. I hated Elf, bro. Yeah. And dude, people love Elf. Like, if you ask anybody what like their top three, five will ferrell movies almost everybody my wife included will put elf in that my wife does too yeah and i get it it's a holiday movie you know it's like oh we watch it every christmas yep my wife makes me watch it too with the kids and all that and like i I get it it's a cute little movie but like it's not that great it's really not (laughs) like it's uh, like my least, well, one of my least favorite Will Ferrell movies. He he has some moments that make me laugh, so I kind of tolerate it. I would rather watch Bewitched. And plus, Zoe Deschanel's off. good in it, which I usually don't like her most of the time. I, I love her. But I like her in that, so. She looks like, just like a super cool person in real life. Yeah. Like, I think I can hang out with her. I feel her. like she drinks her own Kool-Aid too much, too. Maybe now. Yeah. But I used to like her on New Girl and stuff. Like, that's what got I her just, big. like, I only really like her in a... Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. She's great in that, and she's also fucking great in... Uh, yes, man. Yes, man. God, I love that movie, dude. Yeah. That brought Jim Carrey back for me, dude. Oh, me too. Like, he put out a I lot was like, oh, he still got it. Yeah, like he could still put out a great fucking movie, mm-hmm. dude. Because I went into Yes Man with no expectations. Same, same. Like, I was like, this is not going to be that great. I was like, dude, Jim Carrey's fucking desperate, dog. Like, yeah. But then you see it, and you're like, oh, shit. This, this is, is still like old, like old Jim Carrey. I don't think he has it anymore. <laughs> I'm trying to think of the last thing I saw him in. Uh, wasn't really. it Kick Ass Two? I loved him in that. Yeah, he was pretty he funny. Have, I wish he had a bigger part in it. Honestly. Same. Uh, oh no, dude, he was great in Sonic. I mean, I get it. It's, I didn't watch it. I haven't watched it's it yet. Kids movie. Bro. I went to sit down to watch it, and then I got distracted and did something else, and I haven't gone back. I need to watch it because I heard it was pretty. But me, I grew up with Sega, bro. So I love Sonic, and my son loves Sonic, and well, I saw it with him, so it was just real nostalgic. The he got me excited for the second one. Yeah. And like he takes it serious. Like he's like the Grinch in it. Like he just he t- he tries to play the part as good as he can. Like as close to the source as he can. Yeah. No, I I from the previews I was like, you know, old Jim he, Carrey. I thought he played a good daughter Robotnik. Yeah. I really did. <sighs> so what do you give out cold? 7. <laughs> You hear me earlier. I'm like, give it a seven, don't you? Yeah, probably. <laughs> now, like, I'd say after the latest watching, I go like a six point eight. No. Yeah. If you're into like, basically, it's a stoner movie. Yeah. It's a dumb stoner movie without ever talking about it. Yeah. yeah. When I say stoner it's more movie, like it's... drinking, like a partying, like because that's what people in Alaska do, man. There ain't shit to do, so what they do, they get fucked up. Yeah. And fuck, like that's pretty much all there is to do. So, and I mean, they snowboard. <laughs> Okay, drunken comedy. Yeah, if it's if that's up your alley, watch it. I was like, you young, yeah, like a young, like a not a coming of age or any of that shit, but like a like a college type, like college days type of party, like movie. Yeah, it is like a college like college it, party. Like it movie. surprises me that this movie isn't like a national lampoon movie. Yeah, that's the vibe I got off of it. Like the first couple times right. I watched it, those are the people I recommend it to. If you like those kind of comedies. Check it out. You might like it. Anything, anybody else, I wouldn't bother. 
Like, there's not a whole lot. It sounds like you enjoyed it a little more than you're fucking leading on, my guy. No, I just picked out the things that I liked about it. It's just, there's not enough to, not enough. I don't hate the movie. It's not bad enough to hate. That's you're right. I, I don't like. hate it. But That's why I gave it to you. I said he's going to hate it because he ain't going to like it like it, but he ain't going to be able to talk shit about it because it's not like bad. Yeah, right? exactly. You know what I mean? Like it's a shitty. Sp- There's enough to get you through it. Even if you don't watch it again, like, yeah. you know, it's not like. Because the thing what like as soon as I started to like leave like interest, they would tell a joke like the whole like, you yeah. you don't have to drug test me to, <laughs> for me to tell you I do drugs. <laughs> it'll bring me back and i'm like ah, i was funny and then i teeter off i don't need to take a test to tell you i do drugs yeah. <laughs> what's and funny when is I f- when he's when he has that day that daydream about him and the in the sweetest chicks take off your bras make a make a rope yeah 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 <laughs> and he's humping the shit out of that bitch big bad <laughs> big bad <laughs> but that was my biggest gripe is like that part like show me a tip yeah, like it. I'm like, why well, didn't see any titties? Like I don't know. That was kind of a gripe. It probably cost more to show tits, man. Maybe. Oh uh, yeah, they didn't want to pay the girls. Well, and I mean, if you go rated R, then kids have to sneak into it. Thirteen is a lot easier because <laughs> yeah, because this did a rated R movie. You're supposed to be seventeen to go in there. This did come out in 2001, so it was that era where they were trying to like keep it PG-13 so the MTV kids could go era, see baby. it. But now. We're going to be talking about the next movie. They're just, they don't care anymore and they're going hard R. Oh my God, dude. I was so fucking, I was more excited to talk about this fucking movie than I was about fucking Out Cold. I kind of figured you were. That's why last night, I've been wanting to watch it. The Suicide Squad came out on Thursday and I have watched it every day since it's come out, bro. That's funny. That's how much I fucking love this movie, bro. DC, I'm going to say this right now for all the MCU fans and you know, Greg, you know, I love the MCU just as much. Right. DC's on y'all's ass. Now they are, yeah. Now they are. They're Between start- the Snyder Cut and this, that's two solid fucking movies in a row. They dropped the ball with Wonder Woman, too. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. But they came back strong as fuck with this one. I think they're starting to figure out where they lie. And like hard R comedy, DC, I think they're finding their niche. They're just playing with this shit. And like, dude, and there's so many good characters, bro. I, going back and watching it, I love the girl that played Ratcatcher. She's, she was a great part of the movie. Uh, Idris Elba did a great fucking job. It's Idris Elba. He does a good job in. I, I get that, but like he like, literally I, played a similar, same fucking character as Will Smith's Deadshot, and he still made it his own and still made it fun. Yeah, and had a good time with because it. Because Dark Tower, like I don't care for the movie, but Idris Elba and Matthew McConaughey make Dude, that. When movie. I saw the trailer for that movie, I said this could be the greatest fucking thing. Other than the fact that I thought that they should have switched roles. Because I feel like Idris Elba just plays a better villain. Yeah, and Matthew McConaughey feels weird as like, like the villain. You know what I it mean? It just didn't vibe. But they're so good that I was like excited to watch it. But yeah, I, I was. I was the same way. I was not impressed with the movie, but I didn't think it was bad. Right, and that's what I'm saying. Idris Elba just is great. He's that guy. And it's one of those rare times where I'm glad I didn't read the book because I heard people that love the books hated the fucking movie. You're not going to be able to read the books. It's been going on for so long that you would never catch up. Right. Um, also, well, we're gonna make another movie. So John Cena, John Cena did a good job, and I don't usually like John Cena, but he. This is probably the best action role I feel like he's done. Yeah, because like that's all he did before was like cheesy fucking action, <clears throat> and I think that's why I like him so much as a comedian. Like uh, Cockblockers is funny as shit. He's good in that. He's good in Trainwreck. You know, like he's funny without trying to be funny because he's just such a big steroided looking motherfucker. Right. Man. When he says shit, that's funny. It's just even better. Mm-hmm. And I love that fucking scene. See, that's the thing I've been, I've only done one video about how excited I was about suicide squad. And <laughs> I said, no, I don't want to spoil nothing. Cause it was the day after. I just wanted everybody to know how fucking great it was. And to go watch this movie. And, uh, I'm pretty sure I sent it to you on TikTok. Oh, but, I'm sure you did. But, uh, uh, that's why I said I, I can't wait today because I'm going to go fucking balls deep on this movie. I just want to talk about how great everything was that I loved. Yeah, I was watching it last night and I was like, we could t- we've been talking about new movies and I'm sure he would want to talk about this one. And then I was like, we should talk about it. And you were like, fuck. Yes, let's do it. You see how ex- I could just feel the excitement. Oh, dude, the I was text. like, dude, this <laughs> guy like doesn't know how happy I am. Right. He's yeah. got to know how happy I am right now. Yeah. So finally I got the chance to watch it. So 
I don't know. What do you want to talk about? About Suicide Squad? I just want to bring up every fucking scene that I love. Also, by the way, Sly Stone, you are a fucking goat, my guy. King Shark stole the fucking movie for me. <laughs> I'm getting a King Shark shirt sent right now, bro. Are you really? I ordered a fucking Suicide Squad shirt with King Shark on that bitch. Nom, 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 dude. Fucking loved him. <laughs> he was the new... He's my favorite CGI character. Groot was... You know, Groot and Rocket were like my favorite little twos, but dude, like he was great as King Shark, man. Yeah. They made him look so fucking good, dude. I don't know any of these characters. Do you know King Shark? Like yeah. the. Yeah. Originally he was like, it's, it's actually funny. Like he was a Superboy villain mm-hmm. he and uh, he was in issue zero as like a little mini part. And then in issue nine, they gave him like an origin and all that. And it's just like Amanda Waller says, he's the descendant of a shark god. He's like a shark man. Yeah. And he's great white, and that motherfucker eats people. Like, and <laughs> then he became a, a a bad guy of Aquaman, naturally, because he's in the water and shit. But he's not really a great character in the comics, but, like, between the Harley Quinn cartoon and this, they've really done a good job of, like, making him a, a, a big a big time character well the cgi was so good i was like now they can do street shark cgi live action movie they really please could. and give it to me now they really <laughs> could but I, I don't know man street sharks is very obscure very obscure is it would you want to watch like i thought about that like they james gunn does a great job of putting these cgi characters in there and makes them gives them heart and makes them good mm-hmm. but he doesn't focus too much on them yeah like, you wouldn't want to watch an hour and a half King Shark movie. Like, I wouldn't. If there's four of them, I would. Maybe. Was it four Street Sharks? Yeah, it was. Yeah, okay. They had, like, a great white, a fucking hammerhead. Hell yeah. You know, uh, I fucking loved Street Sharks. like a tiger shark, I think, was in there, too. Yeah. Or something like that. I enjoyed it. I used to have... The one, action yeah, figures, yeah. yeah. But that's what I was thinking whenever I seen them. Um... So, yeah. Uh, they had the first three episodes of it on YouTube. Do they? Yeah. If you want some nostalgia, go watch that shit. <laughs> watch it get turned into the sharks for the first time was hilarious. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, I was like, holy shit. I know. Some know. people have said, like, made the comment, like, it's not as good as you remember it being. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> terrible acting. Yeah. Or, you know, cartoon. But, uh, right. It got me thinking about, like, obscure cartoons I watched over the years, like fucking Biker Mice from Mars. Yeah. Remember that? What was your, what was your, like, favorite cartoon as a kid like the one that you're like it just depends on how old i was <laughs> i guess honestly. you're right mine is darkwing duck i love darkwing duck like darkwing duck was my favorite yeah. cartoon when it was on yeah. i i went out of my way to make sure i watched every episode See, i had so many dude it was like kind of like whatever day of the week and what sh- station yeah I like on. gargoyles and <laughs> fucking gargoyles <laughs> doug yeah, Doug. Uh, you, dude, I had Nickelodeon Nights, bro. Fucking all that. Uh, Mine was I Real Monsters. Hey, Arnold, bro. Real, Real monsters. monsters, dude. Fucking. Yeah. Uh, then the Cartoon Network, I had Dexter's Laboratory. Yeah, Johnny true. Bravo. Hoo, ha. Dude, fucking uh, Cow and Chicken. <laughs> and Ed, 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 Eddie, dude. Oh, uh, Cat and Dog. Cat and Dog. Yeah, Rugrats, bro. Yeah. Fucking. I had so many cartoons. That, Rocco's Modern Life. Dude. Oh, 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 no. Another one that was my favorite, Ren and Stimpy. Oh, I yeah. fucking loved. That was late night, dude. Loved Ren and Stimpy. When they I've them. I've wanted to buy the box set. Like, that's how much I loved Ren and Stimpy. It's pretty good. Suicide Squad. Yeah. We're going to get off topic real fast. I was going to say Saturday, Saturday, but like I used to watch Batman animated series, yeah. X-Men, Spider-Man. Batman Begins. Mine was X-Men. I loved X-Men. I loved the X-Men. The and the uh, 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 Spider-Man. And Spider-Man. Fuck, it was great. That was Fox, though, baby. Yeah. Uh, they had so many good cartoons back in the day. But anyways, yes, the Suicide Squad. So my favorite, favorite part of this movie that had me cracking up is when Idris Elba and uh, uh, John, John Cena are oh, trying yeah. to out assassin Dude, each other I was just about to say that is a fucking fantastic scene and then when they get done they figure out they're not even bad guys yes i died my whole family <laughs> i was like oh my god did you why did my men alert me y'all were here i didn't see anybody it is the <laughs> polka dot man is like i poked out of them and killed them all <laughs> and then king shark coughs up a fucking finger it was hilarious dude um, but yeah, that that scene had me dying laughing. So fucking funny. Not non lethal. I win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Compressing exploding bullets. <laughs> Blows the dude apart. And then no what do you say? To show off. Yeah, unless they're showing off something really fucking dope. He's, he's like, just like, fuck, fuck he's right. right. <laughs> <laughs> Go 
all, dude. <laughs> dude, that dude that's sleeping, John Cena just fucking as he's walking by shit out of him man (laughs) yeah that was a great that was my favorite scene that shit had me dying laughing that was awesome i love starro the conqueror he looked good like the whole thing man like it's almost two movies dude just watching them put the team i told you i love a good team building yeah 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 i love a good team let's put the team together uh and i love how they deadpool to because that's what i feel like we were going was going to happen they Deadpool to mm-hmm. half the fucking cast. Yeah. You know, they made it look like they were going to be in the movie a bunch, especially Michael Rooker, dude. I'm thinking Michael Rooker's going to be in this bitch for half the movie. Uh, that's what I was thinking about Weasel. Yeah. I was like, Weasel's going to be in it the whole time. Barely in it. Dude, literally he's been in for five seconds. Yeah. And I think that's kind of like a joke within itself. Like we're going to put Weasel a lot in the trailer and then barely have him in the movie. That's well, pretty funny. Yeah. It it's is. not like you're excited to see Weasel. Yeah. And I didn't think Pete Davidson would be around too long. And Nathan Philly, and that's like his thing. They kill him in every movie too. Mm-hmm. Like, so I knew he wasn't going to be in it long. The fucking javelin guy I didn't think would be around. Yeah. Pete Davidson. I saw him. I was like, oh shit. Pete Davidson's in this movie. Oh fuck. His shit. face got blown off. <laughs> Two seconds into the Two fucking movie. Two seconds into the movie. And then they threw him a bone by letting him pick toilet paper off his fucking foot. Yeah. You know, Which, by the way, I didn't like that scene because I'm like, they're in prison. So why wouldn't he yourself just get up and beat the fuck out of this dude? Like, what are you going to put me in more life, Jay? Yeah, like, right. oh, bitch, I'm here forever. I shot Superman with a kryptonite bullet. You think I'm getting out? Like, <laughs> probation, any of that shit? Yeah. Like, no, I didn't like that. Like, he should have died even sooner yeah. in that movie. But anyways. Um... It was great, dude. Uh, this is, uh, let me just say, this is exactly what I want from my like blockbuster movies. Yeah. I want fun action. I want it to be funny. And I don't want you to hold back. And they did not hold back on the gore at all. This dude, bitch is so gory. He fucking made it like he like. It was crazier than watching a fucking Deadpool. Like Deadpool and Logan are like the standard for me <laughs> as far as gore in a superhero movie. And, and that's what I was saying is like. The war zone doesn't. They realize they don't need the uh, the ticket sales anymore. They can go hard R and still make money, and they're going for it. And I'm like, that's why Deadpool is so important, is because without that movie, this would be a PG thirteen. I I 100 percent agree with that. It'd been a lot of slot more slapsticky, a lot more less glory. If if that's what they, you know, because like you said, Marvel has found a way to make it for the kids, Mm -hmm. but also for the adults, and also somewhat keep it clean. Yes. And I think that they should keep running with that. Yeah, it works for them. But DC is Let doing... Let DC do this. Yes, 100%. Let me see rated R DC movies for now to the end of time. Mm-hmm. If that's how good they can be. Yeah. Why the fuck not, dude? Right. Like, let's be honest. Like, let Marvel be for the kids and let DC be for us, mm-hmm. for the adults. Like, they have more mature subject matter in their comics anyways, I feel like. like That's the thing, though. Like, Marvel, would you... Don't get me wrong. Marvel talks about social issues and shit, but they kind of dance around it a little bit. Right. Like X-Men and stuff like that. Like, DC just straight up in your fucking face with that shit. But like, that's what I'm saying. Like, your kids, would you mind them watching this? So I Squad. watched Suicide Squad with me. Right. And I, I probably definitely shouldn't have let him, <laughs> but uh, he loved it. Exactly. I said, you know, all this is make believe. It's just, you know what I mean? Like, it's not real. Like, you know that people don't act like this. There's no real shark man eating people. Like, mm-hmm. this is make believe. It's from a comic book. Right. And he was like, there are certain parts that he kind of like closed his eyes a little bit because it was brutal. Some of that shit was. Oh, yeah. Watching a, a, a great white just eat a human or chewing when he's chewing on that head <laughs> like it's an apple, dude. Like, I'm like, holy shit. Hi, friends. And he's just, <laughs> you hear him cracking through skulls. Like, I'm like, ooh, that's rough for me. But that's the thing is, like, it makes it so cartoonish. Like, it's live action, but it's still so cartoony that I wouldn't mind letting my kids watch this. And, like, even how gory it is. So what? Like, I loved it. But, yeah. and uh, like I said, my son, he said he liked it. And, uh, and the villain was fucking amazing. Dude, it's just everybody played their part so well. And I know it was a smaller role, but the guy from Narcos, not the main uh, Cosa Maltese guy, right, right, right. not the one that Harley kills. Spoilers. Like I told you, I don't give a shit. I'm going in. I'm going in today. I gave y'all four days. If y'all ain't seen it, you know, you could turn it off after we stop talking about Al Cold. Uh, the guy that played the main one, he did a great job. Yeah. But the the second in command, right. he's in Narcos. He does a great job in that. I forget his name, but he's a great actor. He is just like the one in the Justice League comics, dude. Really? 
He plays the guy from Corto Maltese just like the one from the comics, man. He even looks just like him, dude. It's insane. I should have brought a copy with me today and showed you this guy. It's like he 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 did it perfect. And James Gunn made this movie look like it was a comic book from the eighties, man. Yeah. Like little things like that. Like I thought this movie took place years before the other Suicide Squad. Mm-hmm. Like I thought that's how they were setting it up. Like it was like a prequel type deal, you know? Right. Wasn't. Mm-mm. He just made it look retro while it still was like in now times. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like it builds off of the other DC movies, but it doesn't take it. You didn't have to connect them. You didn't have to do any of that shit. It played in its own world. It There's another Suicide Squad movie that they took characters from and put in this fucking movie. And it didn't do anything to hurt the other movie. Right. If anything, it made it better going yeah. forward. And they wiped, I mean, like I said, we're already into it, dude. They wiped out everybody but fucking Harley Quinn. Yeah. There's nobody in this movie that was in the other movie on uh, Waller. Right. But there's nobody from the first movie that lives through this movie except for Harley Quinn, which is a moneymaker. Let's be real. They're never getting rid of Margot Robbie. She will <laughs> play Harley she, Quinn until she's 60. I was going to say, I think because this is the fourth movie she's mm-hmm. playing Harley Quinn. I think she just loves playing the character. Third. Suicide Squad. Birds of Prey. Isn't this? I thought there was another one. Suicide Squad, Birds of Prey, and Suicide, the Suicide Squad. Yeah, this is only a third. I'm pretty sure. Okay. You know what? I think I'm taking her. The cartoon? Not the cartoon, but uh, when she was with Joker and the Suicide Squad. I think about those as like two different movies. Dude, I wish they would have made a Joker or Harley Quinn movie. I Honestly. Birds of Prey, that's where they fucked up. They should have just dropped the whole Birds of Prey and just made it Harley Quinn versus the Joker. Yeah. Well, I think. Tell me that wouldn't have been a better movie. If they can get it in the right hands, get a good script, and do like an origin story with Harley Quinn and Jared Leto. Like, I would love to see that, honestly. Well, that's what I thought would have been cooler, watching them break up, because it's not like a normal breakup movie. Mm -hmm. You're going to have people getting fucking clipped. It would have been like an all-out war, like, whose fucking side are you on, me or this bitch? And then Jared Leto would have been able to deliver, dude, Mm -hmm. because they would have had some crazy fucking shit. People would have rolled up with ski masks, fucking clown masks, just (laughs) spraying up Harley shit. Like It would have been a badass movie. Let David Ayers direct it. Let him do what Jared Leto, what he wants to fucking do. Yeah. But DC will never let it happen. I know. Not now. Um, what do you think about Harley Quinn in this one? I felt like she took a bit of a backseat. She, I think like, I think James Gunn said like, hey, you're like the most established one. So there's things like you're going to give the movie heart, mm-hmm. but I don't need you to show off. Yeah. Like I need you to let other people shine in this one. Yeah. This one's not just for you. Yeah. She didn't take it over like Birds of Prey. She right. felt like she fit in with the group, which right. I appreciate. I felt like if they would have made a Birds of Prey movie just with the Birds of Prey, but like even in the comics, Harley Quinn never gets with the Birds of Prey. And no. then they picked the weakest fucking lineup of the Birds of Prey to use. Mm-hmm. There's no Batgirl in it. There's no, they didn't give you Cassandra Kane as a kid. Like, I don't know. I just didn't think it was great. I loved Ewan McGregor as Black Mask. I loved old boy as Victor Zaz. Mm-hmm. And I loved Harley Quinn. You know, Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn. Right. They were good enough that I enjoyed that movie for yeah. what it is. But I know they'll never make another one. Like, mm. that's a dead franchise. Like, I think so, too. Yeah, definitely. Uh, this one, though, like, I think this one's going to make all its money. It's number one right now. I liked old girl that played uh, Renee Montoya too. Mm-hmm. She she was just like the comics. Rosie Perez. She yeah. she's a good actress. Like she is a great actress. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I thought she was perfect in this one. Like she was just a mouth. I loved her scenes. Mm-hmm. She was probably the best version of Harley Quinn in this movie. I think so too. It wasn't too much. Like, it wasn't too little. It was like the perfect amount for me. It goes the Suicide Squad and then Suicide Squad and then Birds of Prey last because right. I liked her character in Birds of Prey the most because it got to show more. Mm-hmm. But I just thought she was still a good part. Like she was the best part of Suicide Squad. Yeah, her and Will Smith's Deadshot. And you know they bag a lot on the dude that played killer croc but i liked killer croc in that movie i wish they would have used him better like they did king shark in this one yeah i think they learned from their mistakes and then they (laughs) this is almost like a redo well it's kind (laughs) of like you know when david ayers did suicide squad he hadn't done a comic book movie Mm -hmm. so warner brothers i don't think trusted him like james gunn's already made two fucking classics guardians of the galaxy wasn't even a fucking thing 
and, and, and mainstream. Yeah, it was a very like deep cut comic. Like if, if you're not a diehard Marvel fan, you didn't know who the fucking Galaxy, the Guardians of the Galaxy were when yeah. the movies came out. I remember one saying that, like, who the fuck is Guardians of the Galaxy? And he made that shit a household name. Mm-hmm. So DC kind of had like, hey, dude, you just do whatever you want and we're going to shut the fuck up. Because like we know you're going to give us a hit. Right. Exactly. It's got a 96% on Rotten Tomatoes. That's got to be a fucking record, dude. It's good. I loved it. If they can keep their hands out of the pot and let the fucking directors and writers do what they do, that's my this biggest, is what you're going to get. It's my biggest gripe with DC. Like, what do y'all have against making fucking money, dude? Like, <laughs> No, the thing is, is they're so scared. You're old, it's not going to make. old motherfuckers sitting on that board, or they really think they know more than what people that's go the see thing. this shit. The, that's the thing is they have like a, a checklist of things they want in the movie. That's what is the problem with the original, the first Suicide Squad, is they wanted to check all these boxes. Fuck that shit. Let somebody do something fun and this is what you're going to get. And this is what we got. This is a fun popcorn movie. And this is what I want for my blockbusters. I want to just be entertained well, for no. two hours. It is long, though. <laughs> it's an hour and 20 minutes. What? This movie, Suicide Squad. It's two hours and 12 minutes. Calm down. It's over two hours, so it's, it's still beautiful. long. It's no, beautiful. I don't. It's not a complaint. It it fills the time nicely. Like I said, I've watched it every day. <laughs> I'm gonna watch it tonight. Yeah, are you really? I am. It's good. I like this one. I love. This it. is the best DC has done in a while. Well, I love Snyder Cut, bro. That's still my favorite overall comic book movie. Like, I think it improved that between that and Endgame. Obviously, like those are my two favorites. But like, I love Snyder Cut just because that's the fucking Justice League movie everybody deserved. That's the one we all wanted. Yeah. It has its issues, but it was much better. I mean, it's four hours, bro. I get it. Like, it's not everybody's cup of tea. Right. But if you break it down part by part, like, if you watch an hour at a time, it's still just as good, and you still absorb it all. Like, I loved it. Like, I still want to sit down and watch it again. Um, But, yeah, it it was beautiful, man. I Mm -hmm. loved it. Like. So, yeah. I, but this shit this is the shit I, I love though, like. right and that's what i'm saying like i hope they keep this up with the future dc movies is just but fun you know popcorn what? movie you know what they hate they hate giving Zack snyder any fucking credit man but look who was <laughs> did one you know the- he was an executive producer on this i saw that in the credits i was anything, like oh shit Zach. any character that he had anything to do with that got brought in when he built the universe they have to give him a producer credit that's funny that's awesome yeah. like it's his way of like, you know, y'all fucked me over, but I'm still getting money from you motherfuckers, whether you like it or not. Right. And that's why I think they're trying to wreck everything and reboot everything so they don't have to give him any money anymore. Because, like, they don't want to say, dude, your movies may have not hit the way they should have or they weren't, you know, certain things. Mm-hmm. But, like, I've always said this. If you don't give Zack Snyder two and a half hours, like, don't let even let him make the movie. Right, yeah. He can't tell a quick movie. Mm-mm. Like... He's a visual. If he had someone else writing the script and he can do his visual thing, I think that's where he shines the best. Yeah. Um, but he did like steer DC into this like dark gritty. And I love that. I do too. That's my biggest complaint sometimes with the MCU is they try too hard to keep the kids and the families together with it. Like, right. You know and what I this mean? one, like, this one strikes the balance perfectly because that's how real life is, man. There ain't no, sometimes the choices are fucking hard. Sometimes people are lost. Like that's how that shit goes. And sometimes sharks need to eat people. Exactly, bro. <laughs> exactly. Tell me it just isn't satisfying your soul, bro. Watching Logan and watching Hugh Jackman tear a dude's fucking head off with them fucking claws bro. oh wolverine was my favorite x-men and right. to actually finally get he's my him favorite j- marvel character him and spider-man it's like a constant fight over who's like the number one in marvel for me but i fucking love that wolverine i love logan so much because that's the fucking wolverine we wanted dude yes and it was final it was nice to give it justice before hugh jackman retired from it so yeah. Cause like that's the only one i want to watch now and I used to love all the X Men movies, mm-hmm. but well, Logan's just so good, dude. So fucking good. I agree. Not just the kills, like just the just the tone, like you said. Everything man. feels like a fucking western, son. <laughs> it does. Yeah, you feel like you're watching Clint Eastwood. The I know, and they have a and black and white movie. version of it. I think I have it. I, I know I have it too. I haven't watched it, but I want to. Like, <laughs> it looks like it would be badass. Yeah. I've watched a couple scenes on YouTube, and I'm just like, I gotta do that. Mm. Maybe we should have like a noir episode like we'll watch it or something yeah well we could talk about it at the end like we did this i'm down i also want to get the the chrome black and chrome 
Mad Max and watch that because that's a yeah. that's what, that was his vision. Yeah, for it to be in black and white. He wanted to make the trilogy black and white. Yeah, but are they a, ever going to do the second one, dude? They need to because I want it so like, bad. Tom Hardy's getting up there in age, bro. Yeah. And now that these Venom movies, by the way, dude. Oh my god! Thank How you. Fucking pumped are you for that? Son? So fucking pumped. Woo! The only. The only gripe I have is I think there's too much slapsticky comedy in it. I don't think it's going to be like that. You don't think know? so? No, because okay. that's kind of how they did it with the first one. Like it was going to be all jokes and shit. Yeah. And it, I mean, it had them, but I think it's going to, I think it's going to be all right. But, dude. but Carnage looks so good. So good, dude. And Woody Harrelson. I didn't know how I was going to feel about the fucking orange hair, but he pulls it off. He does. Dude. Pulls it off. Yeah. I'm fucking pumped. I want it to be better than the first. It looks Venom. like fucking natural born killers, dog. He looks like so good when he bites that motherfucker off taste of blood. And that ain't it. Yeah. Like he knows, dude. Oh, I'm excited. Woo. Cause like I enjoyed Venom and it's a fun movie for me, it's but one the, of the people only that talk shit about it, I don't own, I own it. I know. Um, but people that talk shit about it, it's like, I get it. I understand. It's not perfect. It has its flaws, but I still have fun with it. It's Tom Hardy, my favorite actor playing Venom, one of my favorite, you know, it's not rated anti-heroes. R. Exactly. This one, going to be rated R. It has to be. You can't do Carnage in a movie and not make it rated R. That's exactly what I said. But yeah, I'm fucking pumped <laughs> for it. As I said, I said with what they could do. I thought they pushed it as far as they could. Like, mm-hmm. th- I like Venom. It's like you said, is it a perfect movie? No, by any means, but I still enjoy the shit out of it. Exactly. It's something that I've wanted to see done right. When we got it in Spider-Man 3, fucking toe for grace. So disappointed. You know what I mean? Like, you know, old boy played a great Sandman. Shout out he to He did. Him. Like- Shout out to him. He played a great Sandman, but I did not like Skitty Venom. I didn't. <laughs> I really didn't. I'm sorry. And I just, I don't know, man. I think that the first Venom, like, that's the Eddie Brock we all wanted to see. Mm-hmm. We didn't even give a shit that Tom Hardy didn't even have blonde hair or wasn't super fucking swole or none of that shit. Like, right. it was just regular Tom Hardy. I loved it. I did too. But like I said, they get my money every time with these fucking things, man. <laughs> these comic book movies. For real, bro. Like, I don't even give a shit about Sang chi bro. I don't even think I've read a Sang chi fucking comic, dude. But I'm still going to go watch that Ten Rings movie, dog. It looks cool. <laughs> Like, it looks fucking cool. I need to give you uh I saw it in the stack, the uh um Journey to the West. Yeah. It's it's a silly it's movie. What, uh, that's what uh Dragon Ball Z is supposed to be based off of, ain't it? I think so, yeah. Yeah. It's a silly it feels like a comic book movie. Like, like a monkey a, king. An Asian. Yeah, yeah, it looks like an Asian comic book movie. So yeah. But uh Suicide Squad. I I recommend it. It's the best DC has done. <laughs> It, they, it strikes this balance of being comical, but also gritty. My boy Spark, that I'm friends with on TikTok, he said that it's his favorite DC movie. Yeah. He said that, he's like, I, he's like it's going to take me a second to think about it and make sure, but he's like, I think this is my favorite DC movie. Yeah, I think so too. I think they finally, finally figured out what they need to do. Their tone. I don't know, man. I just think it's kind of shitty. It's like I said, like, it ain't like Zack Snyder really was able to do what he, he like. The only movie I felt like they really gave him the reins to do what he wanted. They gave him Man of Steel and he fucked no, that up. They did. I mean, they did, but they still gave him a fucking uh, chaperone. Uh, oh boy, that did the Dark Knight. Mm-hmm. Christopher Nolan. Christopher Nolan. Christopher Nolan had something to do with that movie. Yeah, some of his people were in on that movie. Right, it should so have been better. It's kind of like a pass in the torch. Man of Steel is fucking great. It's no, the it's best. Not. It's the best superhero, or it's the best. Sorry, it's the best Superman movie they have. I don't like it. And I love all the ones, with, and I love the ones with Christopher Reeves and shit. Mm-hmm. The Brandon Roush one's a fucking joke. Even though Kevin Spacey was a great Lex Luthor, Luthor. Sorry, <laughs> <clears throat> they wasted Kevin Spacey's Lex Luthor in that movie, but. Other than that, that movie's a joke. Um, this is the the Man of Steel is by far the best super Superman movie there is, dude. Which one's better? I mean, they're all suck. <laughs> I get it, bro. Like superhero Superman's like that superhero that like everybody has trouble because he has every fucking power and like you know. But I still think it's badass, dude. I don't know. It was just super disappointing to me. I've only seen it once, so maybe I'll go back and rewatch it and give it another go. Uh, and uh, my guy that plays uh, Michael Shannon, 
that plays fucking uh, Zod. He did great. No, He's his one acting of the best was great. Fucking comic book villains I've ever seen. Yeah, he did great. Still stand by that. Mm-hmm. Fantastic fucking villain. Uh, there's a couple more that are that are up there with him, but like he was perfect as a fucking comic book villain. Yeah. Um, I mean, there are things I like about it. It's not a total shit movie. It's just it was disappointing. And I think Henry Cavill's been the best Superman too. Christopher Reeves looked like the Superman like mm-hmm. when you think about like that Boy Scout. But I think you're right. I just hate Superman. Yeah, I think <laughs> is what it is. and a lot of people do, and I get that. You yeah. know, because he's is he because like Marvel doesn't really have a guy like that. That just Captain has, America. He doesn't have every power. Though. Oh, 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 yeah. You see him get his ass beat. You see right. him like suffer loss. Like Superman is never taking an L, bro, unless you got Kryptonite. I mean, and Lex Luthor seems to be the only motherfucker. Him and Bruce Wayne are the only people ever that have ever got their hands on this shit. I mean, the Hulk when he's hulking out, and you're not really stopping him. Well, I mean, they had the the witch lady. She put him down. Mm. Sun's getting real low, big guy. You know, like they found ways to control the Hulk after a while. Oh, like, I guess Thanos did like put him on his ass. I forgot about that. Yeah, whooped his him like he was a child. <laughs> yeah, they like, get, get over right. here, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Scared the Hulk into not like doing anything for like three years which yeah. is why ragnarok is also one of my favorite comic books. ragnarok movies. is great i love that movie dude taika watiti bro which has an amazing fucking cameo in this too mm-hmm. in the suicide squad bro he plays the original rat catcher that was a great thing that's a way to bring an un- obscure dc character out of the fucking vault give him a little shine mm-hmm. yeah he was a junkie but that gave us a perfect backstory to bring Ratcatcher 2 because I guarantee there was a DC fanboy out there that's like, can't believe they're using Ratcatcher 2 and not one. Like, what? Nobody cares about the daughter. And she did a fantastic fucking job. She was the heart of the movie for me. I don't know if I've seen her in anything else, but I will look for her going forward because she did She a was great, great yeah. No, I'm going to get you out of this alive. Like, she put fucking her and the little fucking uh, Stuart Little. <laughs> did the rat just fucking wave at me? Yeah. <laughs> And they didn't bring the rat a drink. What about the rat? <laughs> I'm not going to shake the rat's fucking hand. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, oh, man. And, the, uh, rat, the rat was pretty funny. The girl, the, the, the woman that plays uh, Amanda Waller, Viola, Vi- Viola Davis. I love her. She's perfect. She's You're not going to cast anybody dude, else. Oh, my God. Dude, like You can't. Like You can't. <laughs> yeah. like, uh, like I said, that's probably my favorite John Cena movie now. Like he, he did a great job. Like I'm actually interested in the Peacemaker series they're doing. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if you watched the after set cre- after set credit scene. I didn't. I didn't know there was one until yeah. I looked online. I well, was a lot like, of oh, people fuck. think it's just the weasel waking up on the beach. That's what I thought. Right. But if you waited it out, the second time I watched it, I just watched the credits because I was cleaning up and mm-hmm. shit. And, uh, which, if you pay attention at the end, like I said, it's my fourth time seeing it. So, like, <laughs> I'm noticing shit now that I didn't notice the other times. Like, I'll probably go back and rewatch it too. If you notice that on the board where it always shows who's alive and who's dead, yeah. at the very end of the movie, it shows Peacemaker, Harley, King Shark, and then it shows still Peacemaker still lit up, even though he shot him in the fucking throat. Mm-hmm. So, it kind of tells you that, like, he's alive still, even though. You know, but if you wait all the way to the end of the credits, it reveals he's in a fucking coma and he's all fucked up because, you know, Idris Elba fucked him up. But it's like, this guy's tough as shit. We don't know if he'll ever come out of this fucking coma, but they already let out when this movie hadn't even come out. John Cena already recorded the first series of this fucking show. It's getting ready to come out at the end of the year. So he comes out of it and he gets his own show. So James Gunn directed that, too. So that's probably going to be a badass fucking series. I was going to say, I'm excited for that now. I didn't even know about it, but now I'm excited. <laughs> and that's what I said. And I've never gave a shit about John Cena before this. Not you know really. I mean? I mean, he. Uh, but I think this is by far his best, best movie. Yeah. Because it's like I said, comedy is where he shines the most, but they found a way to use his big swole ass to be funny and be badass at the same time. Definitely. Like. Yeah. Like I, he's a silly looking character, but Dude, he played him perfectly. When he did the Marine. Like he's fucking at his swollen, like at the mo- at the height of his fucking wrestling shit, dude. Mm-hmm. and he looks like a fucking marine. You know what I mean? And like it's just a tear. He couldn't act for shit, and he was trying to be serious, like a bad motherfucker. But it was just like, bro, we know that you're a pretend badass. Like but, he's actually like, no, he's a actual, strong. No, don't get me wrong, he's a strong motherfucker. I was he, gonna say he like, would fuck me up eight days a week. I'm not <laughs> saying that. <laughs> but he's not The Rock. Like I mean, that's the same thing, too. The Rock is swole as fuck. Would that, he beat an average motherfucker down? For sure. 
But like, if he's not going to take a Marine down. Right. Or a real Navy SEAL. Somebody that's killed fucking people with their bare hands. They ain't going to fucking want that smoke, dude. The, uh, the one thing I will say about John Cena, you know, you see these guys, they're like really big and, you know, muscular, but a lot of them aren't that strong. Johnny, John Cena is actually strong. As oh fuck. yeah. I believe that. Like yeah, he sure. is really strong. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. go watch him deadlift. No, I mean, I bet he's a fucking beast. <laughs> yeah, he gym. is. But I'm saying he's not a fucking lethal killer no, 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 like no. they're painting him to be in these right. movies is what I'm saying. And the wrestling shit, like, it's hard to overcome that. I get that. Him and The Rock have probably done the best as far as, like, and Kevin Nash. He's got a couple parts over the years, but they're probably the the, the wrestlers with the best acting careers, I would have guessed. Yeah. Um, Stone Cold's had a couple movies. Some of them not good. Most of them not good. Yeah, but he has his own thing going on now. He's oh, like I a podcaster. Yeah, like, I fuck with Stone Cold. He's straight up redneck. Like that's not even a. He's not even playing. I love that he uh, that he's got that podcast now that he talks to other former wrestlers. Yeah, I love that shit. I listen to it sometimes, uh, and I haven't given a shit about wrestling in years, but. I just like hearing him talk about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he, a great podcaster. Like he, I, he I was, was really surprised. I was like, "Fucking Stone Cold's pretty good." Like I, uh, I was listening to. I don't remember what podcast he was on, but I was like really entertained the whole time because I thought he was going to talk about wrestling. No, he talks about being a backwoods country motherfucker living in a cabin. <laughs> oh, dude, he owns like a shit ton of property. Yeah, just fucking hunts. He just goes shit. hunts yeah. and like I love that shit. Drinks beer. Yeah, he's got a show or two that he hosts too. Mm-hmm. on cmt and shit like oh i'm sure he does he's yeah. making money dude right that's what i'm saying he has his own thing going on he doesn't need to do all these movies yeah he's not hurting right uh but yeah, yeah folks like i can't talk well enough about the suicide squad like there were so many good scenes i feel like i'm leaving out oh the yeah starro there's... like when he was torturing the motherfucker trying mm-hmm. to figure out how to get the the stars off or control the stars that was brutal. I had to be fucking close my side. That's the only time I put my hand over my, my son's eyes. <laughs> that and when Harley Clean was fucking old boy. But like, you know, other than that, I let him go. But right. uh, that was brutal because like he cut people in half and ripped the fucking star off their face. Mm-hmm. And like that was pretty brutal. But like he just still did it very well. Right. And then of course America's behind it all. Like you know what I mean. Like <laughs> I just thought he did a great fucking job. I think so too. Every, like I don't have anything negative to really say about it. Like it's a fun time. It's a good time. I kind of feel you. Like on oh, my fourth time watching it, I was like, okay, we could have gone without this scene. We could have gone without that. Mm-hmm. Could have shortened that a tad bit. Yeah. But I still love it. I can't wait to watch it today. Like, because you only get it for a month for free, dude. Right. You're going to so get it all in I'm going to get my... going to make sure you get it right. locked in the vault. Oh, bro, and I'm buying a Blu-ray as soon as that bitch comes out. I might actually... I mean, I have Suicide Squad and Birds of Prey, so I might as well buy this one, too. I know. I just... Yeah, I'm pissed because my Birds of Prey isn't Blu-ray. It's the only DC movie I have that's not Blu-ray. <laughs> I have the Dark Knight trilogy on Blu-ray. I have the shitty Justice League. I'm going to get a Snyder Cut on Blu-ray, too. Yeah. But, they have a they had a steel book that they released Justice oh, League. I, know, I want I want, I want that. It, it's but, beautiful. My but, dog, uh, we follow him mm-hmm. on Instagram. Uh, Ethan loves movies. Yeah, he's got it. It's I know. Beautiful. I that's, I actually did want that because I feel like the Justice League movie is kind of like a, a time capsule. Yeah, because we're not gonna get another one for like five fucking years. Well, I'm like more so talk about like a movie got made and then got remade to its original to what like, it should have been. In its like glory. you've never seen that before, never and that's really probably good. never gonna happen again. Like it's a very unique time in cinema. It's the one time fans will ever be able to say that we had something to do with that. Yeah. Like, I don't care if you signed one petition, if you used to watch all those videos and the support, the Snyder cut and all that, like you made, you made a difference. Like you made a part of that. Like mm-hmm. that's what gave that shit the fuel to get it done. Right. And I just want to own them just because of that, just because of that. And I really like, I love Zack Snyder's films more than just the DC stuff he did. Like, I love Watchmen, honestly. Mm-hmm. You know, that's DC now, but like when it came out, I didn't look at it as a DC movie or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, it was just I a just, graphic novel. And I loved it. You know, Alan Moore is a great fucking writer. Mm-hmm. He's done some of the greatest comic stories. I was going to say stories. he's GOAT, one of the GOATs. He's done The Killing Joke. He's done fucking uh, Invincible. Dude, I mean, he's done so many good Um, Whenever I was into graphic novels, he was one of the ones that I always bought. No, sorry, that's not Invincible. He did uh, The Boys. Oh, okay. Oh, I have heard about The Boys. I wanted to Dude, you haven't seen that? Mm Mm-mm. 
best fucking show on Amazon Prime, bro. Yeah, I have a friend that like she talks about it a lot. She's like, the boys is so good. It's fantastic. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, like I said, I could go longer on the Suicide Squad, but I know we've been talking for a while already. We have. Yeah. And uh, I don't want to ruin everything for everybody, even though I gave a shit ton of spoilers. <laughs> but it's beautiful. It's definitely top three best fucking comic book movies out right now. Or not out right now, but out, period. And uh, go check that shit out. That's a par guarantee, y'all. <laughs> uh, definitely watch it if you haven't. But yeah. So what are we doing next week? I melt oh, with yeah, you. you gave it to me. I melt with you. I'm I feel like I've heard about this movie. Pro- I mean, we've talked about it briefly. Like, shout out to Mick. He's the one that's like, if you haven't seen I Melt With You, check it out. So I bought it, watched it, fucked me up. And I'm like, we're definitely doing that on a podcast. You know what movie Rob Lowe's fucking great in? What's that? Fucking uh, sex uh, tape. Sex tape. He plays the girl's boss. I don't think I've seen that sex tape. Oh my God, bro. Isn't that the one with Cameron Diaz and they don't have Jason Siegel. Yeah. And they don't show her name and they don't show anything. Yeah. I mean, they show her naked, but it's kind of like side shots and shit. (laughs) Still funny. I can't remember if I've seen that or not. It's hilarious. If you haven't, I'm putting it on your list. I don't think I've seen it. He plays her boss. So fucking funny. That's funny. Isn't he like hitting on her? No, you think he is, but it turns out he's just like a really weird fucking funny ass dude like i'm telling you it's good. i can't remember if i've seen it because I, I can't you're think thinking of it i think you're thinking of ted or some shit probably because the uh, joel McHale it's mm-hmm. on mila kunis through the whole fucking movie right oh and the uh, the boss and rob Lowe, he played a douchebag in uh tommy horrible Boy. bosses that's what i was thinking of um yeah i don't think i've seen it yeah i'll put that on your list I'm pretty I'm, sure I'm i own it down for some jason siegel and Cameron diaz they're both gold in that fucking movie yeah. and rob Lowe too he's fucking gold i love jason siegel yeah that's one of those hidden like like i would have loved a sequel to that even though there's not really much room jack black's got a cool little cameo in it nice i'm always down for a jack black cameo yeah i think that might be the next movie i give you yeah i, I don't know you got to see i melt with you to get your uh yeah <laughs> i'm so curious to see what you say about this movie it's got a lot of big guys. I'm trying to figure out if I recognize this dude on the bottom. I don't know. But I know the other three. So. Mm-hmm. Daring, incredible, compelling. So, yeah, on next time, I'm up with you. All right. <laughs> Later, y'all. See you.